Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Retired Vet Show. Please like and subscribe for future content and help with the YouTube algorithm. Today's show is on President Biden's handlers seeking to limit his speech engagements. So President Biden is running for re-election for his second term as the president of the United States. And his handlers, <clears throat> that's what I call them, handlers, want to limit his speeches so he doesn't go off script and say something that they got to clean up after, or he tells a story that's not true as a part of him trying to empathize with a certain group of people. That's what the narrative has been thus far. The, his most egregious story is about his uncle who was shot down and cannibals ate him, which that story is blatantly false, but he keeps peddling that same story. So his handlers have to come back behind him and clean it up constantly. So now they're trying to limit what he has to say. Stay on the prompter, Joe. Say what's on the prompter and run off stage. Don't say anything else. Don't ask, answer any questions. Just do what we tell you to do and you'll be fine. Those 81 million people that voted for you last time will vote for you again if you keep your speeches uh, short, sweet, and to the point. That's what they're trying to sell to you, the American people. <clears throat> so... One of his uh, press secretaries or campaign managers is stating that uh, they want to do quality over quantity. So they want to keep his speeches short, sweet, and to the point. He said, our campaign believes in quality over quantity. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's going to sell. That's going to get the people excited to vote for you. We don't need to hear from you, but when we hear from you, we want to hear short, sweet speeches that tells us absolutely nothing. Don't tell us what you're going to do for the future of our country, but keep your speeches short. Okay. So <clears throat> on Thursday, Biden made offhanded comments about Japan, an ally of the United States, of being xenophobic. He claimed it because Japan does not want mass immigration for their country. When Biden toured the area of the Francis Scott Key Bridge, he col which collapsed in March, he didn't have a clue where, he, where to stand. They had a big X on the ground, and he still couldn't find that X. And he looked confused as he was standing there. Okay, what, what, what do y'all want me to do? This is what you're seeing on your screen every single day. I guess they don't want you to believe your, your eyes, what you're physically seeing, what you're physically hearing with your, with your ears of how he's in decline. They want you to believe that he's 100% cognitive and that he's 100% in control of everything that's going on. And if you believe that, I got some land in Mississippi I want to sell you. But I'll let you listen to his uh, campaign manager speak about uh, uh, what, they're, what they plan on doing, how they want him to speak. And listen to the way that the, the, uh, the anchor person says what he has to say. It's a very telling statement what he says as well. We have news this morning from NBC News that uh, the, the campaign is looking to shorten its speeches. Uh, Biden's general election strategy is, is less is more. The president's aides are seeking to tighten his pitch to voters with shorter, crisper speeches. To be honest with you, Quentin, I, I think that's a, a very smart idea. I think for it, everyone, for everyone, <laughs> for everyone. I, and I and I really I appreciate that approach because it is a way for the president to to sort of hit with clarity, um, stick his points and move on and not get lost and sidetracked. Is give us a little bit more of the of the scene setting around the thinking there and and, and trying to reimagine the campaign going forward with what you just said and this idea now of the president tighten his his grip on his speeches. Look. Our campaign believes in quality over quantity. Uh, we believe that these touches, these smaller things that are getting directly to the point about what is going on in the stakes of this election are uh, going to be easier for voters to tap into and sort of also go out and say and talk to their friends and family about what's at stake. Now, did you hear what Michael Steele, the former RNC chief said, or campaign manager, whatever, whatever he was, he said, so he doesn't get lost in his speeches. So they don't have to come back and clarify and clarify what he says. So they understand what's going on, but they want you, the American people, to believe that he's cognitively 100 percent there, that he's ready to to uh, hold another four years in office. But I'll let you decide that. 
you are the determining factor on whether y'all vote for Joe Biden with these high gas prices, high food costs, high energy costs, and an open border where over 10 million people have come into the country and taken a lot of jobs from the American people. When the people that are homeless in this country can't get anything, the illegals are getting thousands and thousands of dollars on a prepaid credit card, staying in lavish hotels, and the American people are sleeping out on the street. So if that's the type of future, a future that you want for this country, you vote for Joe Biden in 2024, November 5th, 2024. Vote Joe Biden if you don't want no money in your pocket. Again, if you like the content, please hit the like button to help with the algorithm. And second, please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications for future content. And as always, God bless you all. Stay safe.